with its seemingly long list of benefits, which includes boosting mood, alleviating pain, promoting healthy sleep and healthy digestion, improving skin conditions, and so many more. It's no wonder people are turning to essential oils to support their health and well-being. The popularity of these wonder-working oils is stirring interest in learning how to extract them for personal use or for business. Welcome to Extraction Essentials, where you'll learn and discover how to create a formula using quality engineered products. Hosted by Tony Frischnecht, this podcast is all about the process of extraction tools and the equipment that surrounds the extraction lab or facility. Create an income while enjoying the many benefits and uses of essential oils by tuning in to Extraction Essentials. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Extraction Essentials. I'm your host, Tony Frischkinek. And please, if you guys are watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Uh, also, please hit the thumbs up for us. If you like what you hear and what, you, what we're coming up with, we'd love to hear it. Also, leave your comments below. Today, I've got a different episode. We we talk about educational on the different extractions we're doing, especially with the little buddy. But I also want to get to get get everybody aware of you know some of the some of the big stuff that Nick and the guys at Essential Extraction are doing for the company. Uh, you know, our passion is extraction and we've learned a lot by just being involved in extraction period. And so these guys, every now and then we get different opportunities. So we had an opportunity to go work on a project out in New Mexico. And I'm going to have Nick kind of explain, this is called short path distillation, right? And Nick will go into a little more details, but we're going to go through some of the stuff they did over in New Mexico, uh, process what they were creating, and really take a look at extraction on a much larger scale when it comes to uh, big scale extraction. So Nick, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to you about this and, and also, uh, you know, really having you share uh, some stuff that you guys created, but not just created, but also learned while you were setting this up for uh, for this company. So go ahead and uh, share with people, you know, what the purpose of this, what short path distillation is, and, you know, why you were uh, working on this project. So, you know, we have a pretty diverse team with uh, lots of different skill sets. You know, we have anywhere from engineers, processors, entrepreneurs, and, and, and then also industry leaders. Um, so every once in a while, we'll get someone to reach out to us who, who needs some help with something. Um, so this was a specific, this specifically was a CBD operation, and they were looking into starting out with their own CBD distillate line um, to provide to different, different clients. So how big is this facility that you guys are working in? I don't know the exact size, but I would say it's at at least 10,000 square feet. Okay. Um, you know, like they, they're process, processing hemp using ethanol by literally the ton. You know, they have literally tons and tons of hemp biomass to, to process. And they're, they're process, processing it using ethanol in a, a giant, um, I, I, I believe it's a 500 gallon vat with a stir. And then they then evaporate off that ethanol. And then that you could put that through this process to come out with CBD distillate, which would then be um, quite a bit more potent. And you could then take that to a, another process and make that into CBD isolate if you so choose as well. Okay. So I am going to pull up now um, some of the stuff. We've got some photos here that Nick was creating. Um while he was working out there a couple of weeks ago. So give me just a minute, folks. I'm going to share my screen with everyone. Okay, Nick. So you're adding this extra process. Why did they have you guys come into this? Why didn't they do it themselves? Um, you know, what, how long did this take you? Let's, let's jump into it and then we'll go into some of these pictures. Okay. Great. Um, yeah. So the reason they, they call this out there is they're looking for a little bit um, extra expertise and then also equipment sourcing 
at a little bit lower cost um, than some of the big industry leaders. Um, and, and so the reason they're doing this extra step is, is to further refine their, their ethanol extract so that they can then use that in CBD edibles and avoid kind of off flavors and things like that. And then also sell it to um, cannabis operators within that state, which is, which is actually legal there, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, and then we'll just jump into, uh, the install and, um, just keep in mind, I mean, it, it didn't take too long, as long as you know what you're doing, it doesn't take too long to set something like this, this up. We were only there two days and we, we set everything up and got some product rocking for them. So, so we'll, we'll jump into those pictures and show you just, what's going on. Yeah. Just so you guys know that, um, it didn't take them that long. However, these guys have years of experience in this. It's not something that you just jump in and you're like, Oh, we can figure this out. We'll just watch this YouTube channel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you know, it, it's much more than that. And, you know, I also, if you guys are not aware, uh, of course we've got our staple products, like our little buddy machine extractor, but like Nick said, you know, we, ha we can have access to a lot of different extraction machines of, of all types. And, um, you know, the, all the equipment that surrounds the extraction. So again, if you're interested in looking for some more information like that, go to extractionessentials.com or you can reach out to us. Okay. So let's jump into the first picture here. So you're creating short path distillation CBD. Uh, here's all the photos, but we're just going to zoom in on this first one here. And this first one, you've got, you've got PFPE. I think it says 501. What, what is this? What are you doing here? Yeah. So, so that is, um, it's vacuum grease. And so what that does is, you know, this, this entire system, this entire glassware system is under vacuum. And the reason behind that is, is what we're doing is we're separating compounds by their boiling point. And okay. so your a boiling point of anything will change under vacuum. For example, water boils at around, 97 degrees under vacuum as opposed to you know 200 um or 220 rather um so you know we're, we're lowering the boiling point of these different compounds so that we can extract them at lower lower boiling points and lower temperatures um but so in this first photo here i'm showing um that i'm greasing up one of the one of the pieces with vacuum grease and so you're going to want to grease up every single joint and every single connection with this vacuum grease um, and the reason behind that is it will create a better seal. And then also it provides a little bit of lubrication. So your glass joints don't get stuck, which you could end up breaking stuff. So, so that's why I wanted to make sure that that's your first photo, because that's the first step is you take all your glassware out, you make sure everything's there. You make sure that nothing's broken. If something's broken, you call the company back and they get you a new one, you know, that whole deal. Um, but then the second step is then greasing up every single joint and that way, you're not getting anything stuck. So you're going through the entire, you're the, the entire setup and making sure all the joints that are connected to this whole system are vacuum seal tight so that you can have a very efficient system, right? Correct. Yes. Okay, great. All right. Um, do you want to go to the next? Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Next and one? so as we move to these next two photos, so okay. the first photo shows um this is our our heater chiller and so before you set up you know all of your stuff you want to make sure all your equipment actually works before you're actually starting a run or something like that so we set up the heater chiller and then also the the magnetic um heat and stirring mantle and we had that running at heat and then we had the chiller chilling i had it set to uh zero and then we went to lunch and as you can see on the next photo, we come back an hour later and it's at negative 0 0.08, which is within the parameters that I'd like. It to be. So this so, thing looks expensive here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's <laughs> this I little mean, machine. I, I mean, this whole setup is 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 quite expensive. Um, okay. But th this specific piece of equipment, I believe, was like a little under two grand. OK, um, so, you know, I, nothing's nothing's cheap if you're trying to make quality. Okay. Is, is kind of the name of the game. But yeah, as, as we move to the next picture, you'll kind of see me and, and my bald skull yeah. setting up all the, the all the glassware here. Um, so I'm, I'm just setting up, I'm hooking up the, um, as you can see, that big tall column mm -hmm. 
that that's the condensing the condensing column and so what will happen is is the different compounds go up there and go through this reflux condenser thing and then travel through this secondary condenser which is that long arm that's kind of down at a 45 degree angle that i'm putting on there um but yeah the major one of the major things that you want to keep in mind with a setup of glassware like this is support and that's why we have that that stand behind it and so i think the hardest thing about setting up one of these these pieces of glass glassware is setting up all the clamps and things to hold stuff and things to support your glassware so there's not too much strain on on each joint um but once you have that that pretty down you know you can take everything apart clean it and then everything's just set up and you can just put it back in there. This looks, and, and tell me if I'm wrong here, but this looks like a high-end distilling setup, like you would distill alcohol, like you'd see in the old days. With you've got glass everywhere, so is, is that similar to what you're doing here? Is creating a, a similar process, or it's, am I completely off? No, it's a similar process. It's a little bit even more so on the, I mean, you're more likely to see a system like this in a high-end uh, chemistry lab than, um, you know, like a, at a distillery, it'll basically just be boiling and condensing. Exactly. Whereas, exactly. We're, we're, you know, we're, we're, we have the heater at a certain temperature and everything's stirring and it's under vacuum. And, you know, there's all these different components to it that, that add to, to all, you know the the efficiency of the system. Yeah, I mean, in something like this, you're controlling the environment much more. Uh, exactly. I just I just wanted for the listeners but, out there just to give them an idea of of really this basically uh, a refining process, right? But yeah, to your point, I mean, we could 100 percent make vodka in this system. <laughs> would, would, would anyone do that no it's way too expensive and yeah, you, yeah. you don't you know it's too small um but yeah like i mean you can definitely distill alcohol with using the same system great and then so as you, as we move to this next photo here um i'm setting up another piece of glassware which it's actually called a vacuum takeoff and so there's that that black valve on the top there mm -hmm. and and that's what controls your vacuum from your boiling flask, which is, is the, the piece that has the little black jacket on it on the, on the left-hand side. Um, so that controls your vacuum from there to your vacuum pump, which is further down the line. And a, as you'll see, as these photos keep going on, you always want to set up from, from left to right because, you know, as you're setting up, the glassware is going to be a little bit, you know, different. And so you want to make sure everything's lined up correctly. And of course, this is what the first time I installed all the glassware. So you always want to make sure to true every piece up um guys i want to if you guys are really interested in this it, we're going to do our best to describe what nick is doing here but if you're really like huh i really want please tune in the youtube channel and check it out there because it, it, we've got some great photos here so nick please continue yeah and so like as we move on to the next photo i'm just showing you further down the line um you can see on the far left hand side of that photo the top of that vacuum takeoff valve and then that then goes to a cold trap and so what a cold trap is is it, it essentially it saves the life of your pump um because there's terpenes and different compounds and things like that that can get sucked into your pump and then ruin it because it it eats away at gaskets and and thins out the oil and all these things um so what a cold trap does is um it, it you have a that little piece there that you see the little kind of wand that it's still wrapped with a uh, uh, saran wrap and stuff. Oh yeah. 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 Um, but that wand inserts into the top of that cold trap and it gets okay. to negative 60 degrees. And so, so that, that, that wand has a little cooling agent on the base of it that you set inside this, this uh, glass container here. Precisely. Yes. Okay. And then, so that's sitting inside ethanol. So it has this chilled ethanol okay. that the, the vacuum port is then at, at you know, it sucks, it sucks the components through the vacuum up along the walls of that chilling coil. Mm -hmm. And then we'll condense those terpenes and, and water and anything like that into a little flask before it goes off to your vacuum. Okay. So, and then in the next photo here, 
you'll see we got the all the glassware set up <laughs> on there with the thumbs up um you know we're ready to rock and and so the next step is is we we um i i filled up the the uh recirculating chiller up to the condenser so you can see that in the next photo here mm -hmm. and then got got that running circulating got so what's that. what's inside what's inside the uh yeah so that yellow fluid you see mm -hmm. that's that's actually the chilling fluid okay. um and and you can pick the color of your your you can have it colorless or you know blue purple whatever I, our client picked yellow so uh, that, i typically use clear that, but that's got glass running through the center and what you're saying is around the outside of the cylinder there there's another cylinder that encases it with the chilling fluid Correct. Yeah. So okay. there's a hollow centerpiece like that where the oil actually flows through there. And then around the outside is, is a, a heat or cooling jacket, whatever okay. you so choose. Gotcha. And then in the next photo, you can see here, you know, as we're working, we, we find other pieces of equipment that, that, that the client was like, oh, well, yeah, we just haven't set that up yet. So, so we, we went ahead and set this up for them as well, which is it's a rotary evaporator, okay. um, which, which essentially distills alcohol for you on, on, at a very high efficiency. Okay. And then are you recapturing any of that or are you just evaporating off the alcohol? No. Yeah. So you, you boil it off and then you recapture that clean ethanol and then leave behind all the unwanted stuff that you then just throw away. Okay. And then in this next photo here, you'll see me, and then um, one of the uh, local staff members were, were pouring uh, the actual ethanol crude oil into uh, a glass funnel that he is then heating with a heat gun because, you know, like the, the cannabis oil, it's pretty thick stuff. So, you know, as you need when to you heat it up. When you say crude, it. it's, it's... I mean, it's dark. It's black. <laughs> it's yeah. got a ton of plant material. It's really... Um, exactly. It's really not meant to be used in anything at this point, right? Correct. Yes. I mean, people do use it, and of course, you get the different flavors out of it, and you, stuff like that. But, but to really create a, a quality, consistent product, you have to take it a few steps further. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So and then, so I, yeah, at this point, we're running, we're running the system. I poured it in there. We're under vacuum. This uh -huh. next photo is is the the terpenes. That are coming out of out of the crude oil, which um, you know, with some products, if you're using a really high quality oil, those terpenes you might want to save, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, but in this type of oil, no, you do not want to keep those. You could just go ahead and throw those right in the trash. And you can see just to the right of that that smaller flask, it has a little bit uh, lighter fluid in it. Yeah. And so that's the fluid that's being caught from the cold trap there. And those are other terpenes, and then also possibly even water. And things like that. So the the terpings are they in all plant matter? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's it doesn't matter if it's cannabis or lavender or eucalyptus. It's it's all in there, right? Yes, precisely. Okay. And then as we move to this next photo, you can see um, that I've actually what you do is maybe, once you catch your maybe sorry maybe, yeah no it's okay I, I'm just thinking maybe we should you know, just share what terpings are if people haven't heard of them. Um, I know we talked about it a little bit on the show, but will you share a little bit about your knowledge of terpenes? Yeah. So, I mean, terpenes are essentially the things that give things smells and tastes. Um, so like, for example, I mean, we always talk about lavender, so I'll just continue circling back to that. Mm -hmm. So um, for, for lavender, you know, there can be a bunch of different terpenes within it. Um, whereas you know, there's only, there's a couple of predominant ones, but there's, there's probably 20 other ones that have minuscule little amounts. And that's what, what makes things smell like the way they smell. Um, so like the terpene that's, that's the most prevalent in lavender is lanolu. And so that's like what you and I know as the lavender smell, mm -hmm. whereas myrcene is like mango or limonene is like lime, you know? So it's mm -hmm. like, whereas there's tons of other things that have those same terpenes, but just in different ratios. Great. So does, does for, that kind of answer your yeah, question? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for expanding on that a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. All right. So now we've got a wide shot of 
you know, most of the setup where the vacuum is hanging. So what are we doing here? Yeah. So, so now the system's running, I've actually changed out that, that larger bottom flask once already. Okay. So I took the, the, took that flask off, which was the terpenes. Uh, you know, I, I closed off the vacuum first, uh -huh. took that off, put a new flask on. And then this flask is, is the flask where we're asked actually collecting our wanted material. And that's, that's our cannabis distal. Yeah. It looks a uh, hundred times CBD better. Distal. Yeah, that, yeah, it looks like a hundred times better than the black oil you dumped in just a minute ago there. Exactly. You know, and and of course this is CBD, you know, a lot a lot of you cannabis people out there will look at that and be like, oh, that's still pretty dark. But you know, I mean we're dealing with cannabis oil or CBD oil here. We're not dealing with cannabis oil. Um, you know, and pretty low quality hemp uh, as well. I mean, most hemp that's produced is not it's not like the flower you'd buy at a dispensary, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know, to take something like that and turn it into a, a, a product that you could actually see through as opposed to this midnight oil, um, you know, it's, it's a, a pretty big improvement. And like I said before, you can then take that and, and further refine that and make, make CBD isolate as well. Yeah. I mean, it really depends on your formulation of what you're creating for your pro what kind of product you have, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so this is all up to personal preference, interpretation, business models. There's so many things that go into how much do I want to refine this? A hundred percent. I mean, there's no wrong answer. I mean, there's some people, like you said, who just use that crude oil to make products. You know, for example, if, if you're making a soap or a salve or a lotion, it, it might be a little overkill to, to go this next step. You know, you're not actually ingesting it. It's just going to be topically applied on your skin. Um, so, you know, it's not like you're going to taste weird flavors and things like that, but this process, we're taking out those flavors and then making it more potent as well. Well, and you know, you're adding expenses to it again, like, you're talking about soap, stuff like that. I mean, if so, people are taking more time, they're of course spending more money, uh, and spending more of their valuable time when they don't have to, uh, you well, know, you, I used to. Uh, you know, my background was growing up was a carpenter and, you know, you don't need to uh, sand a two by four that you're building a house with down with a nice fine sandpaper. If you're going to be hiding in a wall, it doesn't make any sense, right? Exactly. So, okay, great. Let's go on to the next one here. Yeah. Um, and so, so as we move on. Yeah, we've got, I'm going to make sure I'm on the right pick here, but we've got the five liter Yep. It's almost all the way full. Exactly. And so okay. just to put that in perspective for you guys. So five liters, um, you know, that's, you know, two, I mean, it's a couple, two liter soda bottles or, okay. you know, as, as far as in grams, about one liter is a thousand grams of, of CBD distillate. So, okay. so we have about three, I don't know, maybe 4,000 grams of CBD distillate there. Okay. Um, so, you know, as you can see, I mean, that's, it's pretty expensive stuff. So, you know, this process only took a couple hours. Of course, the equipment's very expensive, but, you know, you can come out with, with quite a bit of, of high-end product that, that has a, a very high dollar amount attached to that in, in, in on the marketplace. So, um, you know, just something to think about as well. Yeah, and, and I know you don't know the market in New Mexico, um, but really taking it from the crude they had and developing into this product, I mean, how much what would you say in percentage value has been added to running this process here? Well, I would say, you. I mean, you almost double the potency. Really? Um, yeah, I mean, you, you can go from, you know, 40, 50% potency to 70 80 but with that said i mean you're going to lose that other amount because it wasn't you know what you're looking for um but mm -hmm. with that said um i think i don't know what the, the cbd is just up and it's been up and down now yeah no but, i mean i i don't want i don't want um you know the viewers to get confused on pricing here because it, it's it's so speculative right now but but I mean, really just the quality really is what I was getting at is. But yeah, the you... that would probably be, that's probably about 70 to 80% potency. Okay. So, good. 
you know, with that said, you know, it's, it's 5,000, you know, 4,000 grams at 70% potency. That would be, um, let's see here. 700 times whatever 700 times five four thousand is that's how many milligrams <laughs> okay. you know? uh yeah so i mean it's very potent i mean you could make tons of product out of that did you say 700 times four thousand correct so it says uh it'd be 2.8 million is that right there you go that I, it sounds that sounds about right that's why i couldn't Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. What's next? Yeah. And so the next picture is just us with uh, our team who went there for the setup with our, our happy client with his, with his oil there. And, and, and that's about it. You know, I just wanted to put together this short little, little, little montage here to show you guys how it all works and show you some finished product. And, and then also, you know, if you guys ever have any questions about any of this sort of stuff, feel free to reach out. You know, we can always help. Well, yeah. And, you know, just so people know, so we've got David Ross down here on the bottom. Um, he was him and the gentleman here on the right. Um, they're the ones that created uh, the little buddy together. They actually built this thing from scratch. This is something that we didn't send off to China to get made. We actually took the time to design this and see how it worked. And, you know, these are some of the processes in place where the little buddy actually came from. It came from setting up stuff like this and understanding how can we refine this down more? How can we make this cost effective for anybody to do it and we're working to continue creating a better product as we go on and some of these guys uh such as james so james and david here have put this together and then the the gentleman who owns the uh facility down in new mexico here um brian he has been in the uh medical cannabis world down there uh, for over five years now, and now he has a hemp facility. So we've actually helped these guys many times uh, build uh, a better system at the end for refinement. And so Nick and Nick and James, David, they are actively in the process of distillation and extraction all the time, refinement, filtering. I mean, these are things that we keep creating. And again, on the large scale. So if you're interested in learning about this process, uh, the short path, path distillation, um, again, reach out to us at extractionessentials.com. Uh, you can also leave a comment in the YouTube chat, please. And then if you like this, please hit the thumbs up on YouTube. Also, guys out there, if you like what you hear, please hit the subscribe button so we can notify you when we have another essential extraction episode come out. We come out every Monday. Um, we are coming up to the end of our season here, but you listen to the next episode. We'll give you some more information about that. Nick, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's been great. And, you know, I, I learned something new every time you had some pro tips in there on, uh, you know, not wasting your time if your product doesn't need it. I really like that one. So, guys, come back again and join us next week where we will have another awesome episode. This is actually going to be episode 25. It's really cool. We actually uh, take another extraction pro process, and Nick does it for us right in front of us, shows us how we can do it. It's a very simple process that can be done at home. Guys, I encourage you to come see us there. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. So, Nick, awesome again. Great job. We'll see you guys next week. Go check out any of the new episodes and any of our old episodes at extractionessentials.com. Guys, this is what we do. This is our passion. We love it. We'll see you guys next week. You have just listened to another informative episode of Extraction Essentials with Tony Frischknit. 
We invite you to come back next time as we strive to provide useful knowledge and tools every week to help you on your extraction business. You can also visit extractionessentials.com for additional resources and to know more about working with Tony. See you again next time.